Hi everyone, Amy here. Welcome back to your weekly update for Friday, June 11th, 2021. So I'm back here again in the gazebo garden. I have the gazebo over there and a gorgeous full flowered Acousa dogwood behind me. In case you didn't know, if you didn't see our email from last week, we are currently offering a buy one, get one free special on all annuals and all perennials. Now, usually every year at this time of the year, we have a sale on annuals, but we do not have a sale of, on perennials. So this is the first time we've ever done that. It's very excited. Uh, you may wonder why. Well, we have too many. We just grew too many. We grew too many annuals. We grew too many perennials this year, but we also have a summer crop going on. So we want to kind of clear out some of the greenhouses to bring up those new plants as well. We still have a very nice selection of annuals, including veggie plants, herbs, geraniums, and patients, succulents, and lots and lots of strawberry plants that are already bearing fruit. As far as perennials, we are bringing up loads of new plants daily from the back. So we are fully stocked on shade plants, including coral bells and hostas, and sun lovers such as butterfly bush, allium, lilies, ajuga, and more, all at buy one, get one free. And speaking of this BOGO sale, I definitely took advantage of it myself. I bought quite a few hostas. I bought three of the Shadowland Wee and three of the Shadowland Autumn Frost hostas. And I'm gonna make like a little Shadowland series area in my uh, yard. Uh, it is under a very large maple, so it took me quite a while to dig the holes for these plants. Hopefully they will do well. I mean, hostas are quite resilient, but I'll keep you updated on how those are doing. Well, I don't know about you, but I've spent too much money on plants this year so far. I have too many, uh, but I basically just have landscaping around my home, but I do have over two acres, and I have quite a few challenging areas that I'm gonna start landscaping as well. Like on one side of my house, I have a stream that runs uh, all the way through the property, so it's usually wet. So I had a dappled willow there, but something took it this year. It was doing very, very well, but now it's dead. I have a bald cypress that's doing very, very well, but I'll have to start landscaping the rest of that area. Then on the other side of my property, I had a big black walnut, and if you've grown plants near black walnut, you know there's toxicity in the soil because of those roots. Uh, it is now down, but unfortunately more black walnuts are coming up. So I like to be, I like to landscape in challenged areas because when you come in and you ask us, hey, I have these situations, I can give you my personal experience on what works well for those areas. Okay, so I moved the camera so you can get a better view of that beautiful dogwood. I want to talk a little bit more about my plants at home. Uh, one thing I want to talk about are my strawberry plants. They are doing so well this year. I've had them in the ground for maybe two years and this year I decided I was going to put them in a raised bed. Number one, because they weren't doing as well as I liked but the real reason is because the bunnies. Anytime I had a juicy red strawberry, the next morning I would go outside and they would be gone. But they are doing so well. I have uh, just like Ozark Beauty old fashioned strawberries. I have the new buried treasure strawberries. And for the first time I am getting fruit on those pine berries. That is the like white strawberry with the red, red seeds. Now I've never actually been able to try one of these to check, uh, see what they taste like, but I'm very excited because I think I'll have one here in the next couple of days and I'll let you know what I think. And speaking of fruits, uh, a lot of you have been coming to the doors of the Albarn Market. Unfortunately, we are not quite open yet. It may be just another few weeks or less than two weeks, but we are definitely gearing up. Today we are expecting several pallets of product from a farm co-op. We're talking our salad dressings, popcorn, salsas, jams, things like that. I've also brought in some new candy collections and a f and fresh fudge. And this fudge is delicious. We had some samples. I can't wait for you to try that too. I also concentrated a bit on home decor. So we'll have a section for kitchen, laundry room, bathroom, wall art and gift items. And of course, pottery and select house plants. So like I said, we're getting that all together here within the next week or so. And we'll have an opening date announced pretty soon. And one more thing about the market, we are this year bringing back the Blueberry Festival. Of course, last year we had to cancel it because of the pandemic. I am bringing it back this year. There may be a name change. It is There won't be as many activities as normal as we're getting more into the swing of things. But I was able to book a DJ. Uh, we will have our hayride and some other activities. But I will have more details announced in the near future. So save the date for July 24th. So I want to give you one more update on how those hairy balls plants are doing. I know many of you have been asking. They will be ready soon. So let's head back there and take a look. And then on my way back, maybe we'll run into some plants I'd like to talk about as well. They were hiding in the middle here, but I found them. There they are. We have so many. They go there and all the way up the middle of that other table there. So they're looking really, really good. My guess is they will be released here pretty soon. So definitely stay tuned to social media and your email newsletter and we'll let you know when we go ahead and release these to you guys. 
And also on my way out of here, I wanted to share with you guys uh, some little baby herb plants. We're gonna have a summer herb crop again. Looks like basil, chives, oh the barbecue rosemary. This is really nice. The stems get very, very rigid and you can actually use them as skewers on the grill. Uh, cilantro, oregano. Wow, Carl bought a lot, didn't he? Mojito mint, meal parsley, and sage. All right, I'm gonna show you a few plants here this week. One I've talked about a lot, so excuse me, but it's my favorite. Okay, here it is. This is the quick fire hydrangea. It is a panicle type. It can get big, upwards of six to eight feet by three to five feet, but what I like so much about it is that it blooms a good month before any other of these panicle types. Like, do you see any other blooms on these hy other hydrangeas? Nope, just the quick fire. Also, I like uh, the pollinators, bumblebees, honeybees, they really like this flower. I have a limelight hydrangea, they don't go to that as much, but they really, really like the quick fire. If you're looking for something similar, but not quite as big, there is a new variety called Little Quick Fire. So it's uh, right there behind it. So this only gets three to five feet tall by three to five feet wide if you don't have such a big spot. These can go in full sun, part shade, so it can be a little dry, can be a little moist. They do well just about anywhere and they will bloom each and every year, no matter what. So I made it into the perennial greenhouse. Boy, is it hot in here. Um, so I'm not gonna stay very long, but uh, behind me are the rose lilies. Do any of you have these? They are very, really nice fragrance, good cut flowers, and they are pollen free. Plus many of them, maybe all of them, I'm not sure, have like the double petals. And look how tall these plants are. So that one is Elena, $12.99, and those are buy one, get one free as well. Samantha with like a white edge. Oh, passed over Carolina, more of a whitish with a kind of a yellow center. And Thalita, also with a white edge. Again, these are all buy one, get one free. And look how tall they are. And they are fully budded and totally ready to bloom. Then earlier I talked about that Shadowlin series area at my house. This is Seducer. I do have three of these, but in a different spot. One thing about these, they stay extremely upright and vase shaped like all season long. So if you're looking for a hosta with a different shape, not one that just kind of flops over, the Seducer is definitely a good choice for you. And it's really colorful as well. So on my way back, I noticed Max and Melanie were putting up the annuals that we have on the green roof. But unfortunately, we ran into a big, big problem. All those sedum trays up there uh, fell forward with a bunch of gravel, so there's actually no room for them. So now Max, unfortunately, has to get up there, push them all back, and then hopefully we'll have room to put those uh, petunias up there. Okay, so I made it back. It is very hot and sticky today. I gotta love Ohio, right? But this week I also wanted to share with you a, a picture of a moth that my dad found. He said, hey Amy, look at this, isn't it cool? Now after looking it up, I think it's just a sphinx moth, but the banding, the color on the banding was so pronounced and so bright. I think I'm right, I don't know. If you know better than I do, I'll, please let me know in the comments below. But I thought it looked similar to the clear wing moth from this week's Ohio Nursery and Landscape Association Plant Health Care Newsletter. Now the clear wing moth looks almost like a wasp, but it is in the Lepidoptera family, which also includes moths and butterflies but they also can have that distinct colorful band. So I just thought that was kind of a neat coincidence, so maybe be on the lookout for both those bugs in your landscape. And I wanted to finish off this week by telling you two bad reviews we got at the nursery. Now I take these seriously, definitely personally, definitely seriously, and kind of they're my fault. Um, a couple weeks ago we had a salesperson come in, he wanted to sell us a certain plant stand. Uh, I thought he was a little brash, a little assertive, uh, not my style. So I repeatedly asked him, I said, hey, this is your, your product is nice, but I need a little bit more information. Do you have a paper of, you know, what comes with it, uh, how much they are, what comes in a case, blah, blah, blah. I never really got those answers. I repeatedly asked, he's like, would you want a case? Do you want a palette? Very assertive, uh, like I said, not my style. So after a couple of weeks going back and forth, I said, you know, maybe you should go talk to the store manager instead of me. I just run the Albarn Market. We're only open for three months. Maybe this isn't the best choice for this area. Uh, unfortunately, last Saturday, I woke up to two bad reviews, one on Yelp, one on Google, and after reading them both, I realized they are both from him. 
Now he wrote that we don't support any local small business and that we were rude to him. In short, this wasn't the case. Um, he said our store is filled with a whole bunch of stuff made from China, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now the one review has since been edited, but it's upsetting because it brings down our average. I know that new potential customers may look at that as a bad sign. Now, if anyone supports local business, it is definitely us. They are also from California, so I'm not really sure what all the huss and fuss is about. I mean, we opened a seasonal produce market just to support local farms, but I digress. But I just wanted to share that story with you guys um, in case you did run into those really bad reviews, and I just wanted to give you the story. So on that note, I want to thank you again for watching the video. Be on the lookout for that opening date for the Albarn Market, and hopefully I'll get that video posted about the beehives over at Cyberling Farm that I promised last week and still haven't got to, uh, but hopefully soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.